Hello ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Welcome to a brand new Game Maker tutorial. Today we're going to be creating uh, health bars, hunger bars, and uh, thirst bars, which you may use in a survival game, maybe a zombie game. Not too sure, You, uh, they've got lots and lots of uses, so this is just kind of a short walkthrough on the creation of that. So we actually don't need to create any sprites for this, uh, we're going to do it all in the draw event. So I'm just going to create a new object, and I'm going to call this OBJ Stats. And I'm just going to call it stats because, you know, health, hunger, and that, it's all kind of considered stats, and I think it's better than, you know, OBJ bars or something. That being said, you can name it whatever you like. It doesn't really matter. Uh, next step, I'm going to add a create event uh, so we can declare some variables. I'm going to drag in some code here, and I'm going to declare three variables. Uh, of course, we're going to have health, which I'm going to set as HP, is equal to uh, 100. I'm going to set hunger is equal to 100 and I'm going to set thirst is equal to 100. Um, I'm also going to set max HP equal to 100, uh, max hunger equal to 100 and max thirst is equal to 100. So we've got six new variables here. We've got the base variables. Now these are the ones that are going to be subtracted as time goes on and these are the ones that are kind of these are max, so our hunger is never going to go past 100, or whatever you set your max uh, hunger to. Um, so I'm going to hit the check mark there, and I'm going to add an event, and I'm going to add a draw event. Um, now you can, of course, you could use a draw GUI, I believe, but for this case I'm just going to use a draw event. And first thing I'm going to say is I'm going to do draw underscore health bar which is of course a built-in game maker function to allow us to build health bars. And you can see down here, uh, there's a lot of parameters. We got, what is this? Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11. We got 11 parameters and that's quite a few, but don't stress, uh, most of them are actually quite basic. Um, so let's just jump right in here. I'm gonna say uh, 100, uh, 100, 500, uh, 200 I believe. Um, and I'm gonna explain all this in a second. I'm going to set HP, uh, C underscore black, C underscore red, and C underscore lime. I'm going to set zero, and then true and true. Okay, so let's, uh, I do have an error because I don't need that. So let's walk through this. So the first four uh, numbers we have here, these are our coordinates. So this is our X1, our Y1, our X2, and our Y2. So this is what's going to draw the box. This is going to draw the base health bar. Next is our variable. So this could be your health, your thirst, your hunger, whatever it is. And that is that variable there. So that's the variable that this health bar is going to represent. Next is this color. And this is whatever the back of your health bar looks like. Now there is an option uh, coming up to disable the back of it. But basically when your health goes down, it's going to show this black background um, where you don't have health. So you can disable or enable that. You can make that whatever you whatever color you like. Same with this color. This is this is the color when your health is at like ten. This is this is the color it's going to become. This it's going to become a reddish color. And then when your health is at like a hundred or ninety, it's going to be uh, whatever color this is. So this is your min your min color as it says here. So your minimum color for when you have no health. This is your max color. So as you lose health or you lose hunger, it's going to transition from this color to this color. And it actually does a really good job, in my opinion, of doing that. Next is uh, direction. So of course, we just want the health bar to go zero. We want it to go this way. We want it to fall back left. Um, of course, if you want it to go a different way, you can set this to 90, 180, or 270. Um, and it will change what direction. Of course, 90 being this way, 180 being this way, and 270 being down. Next is a show back. So if you set this to false, it's not going to show black at all. Um, but I'm going to set it to true just because I think it looks nice. And show border, we're going to set to true. So this is just going to be kind of a black border around the outsides. Uh, once again, not necessary. You can set that to false if you like. But in, in this case, I'm just going to set that to true. So before we add the rest of the health bars, uh, let's just see how this works. I'm going to create a brand new room. I'm going to make it uh, 640 by 480. I've not yet figured out how to set my defaults for that. Um, and I'm just going to place OBJ stats in the room. And I'm going to hit play. And it's going to boot up here any moment now. It's just got to compile it. 
Okay, and as you can see, we've got a ginormous health bar. That guy is huge. So what are we gonna do? Let's uh, let's turn some of the stats down just a tad. Um, let's change 500 to 300. Let's set 200 to 150. Actually, I'm gonna change this to X, this to Y, this to X plus 150, and this to Y plus uh, 50. Let's see how that looks. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting it, instead of setting it according to the coordinates of the room, I'm setting it according to the coordinates of this little question mark here. Um, so of course it's gonna be at its X and Y position, then it's X position plus 150, and then it's Y position plus 50. So that should actually look a lot better if I'm if I'm correct here. Uh, looking a bit better, we should make it, I still think it should be thinner. Um, so if we change this to Y plus 15, maybe? Um, I, you know, of course this is all about playing around with what you want, that's perfect. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something just like that. Um, now let's do a quick test here. Let's add an event. Let's add a key press space event. And I'm just gonna drag in some code. And I'm just gonna say HP minus equals one. Actually no, minus equals five. So every time we hit the space bar, it's going to subtract from health, or from HP. Um, and we're just gonna make sure our health bar goes down fine. So as you can see, our health bar goes down, it gets more and more red, and then we go to die. And we've got the black background and the outline and everything, and it's looking great. So what's the next step? Well, the next step, of course, is to do this two more times, but with our other variables. So I'm just gonna do Control C, Control V, and let's make this um, let's take these starting coordinates and let's go x plus uh, 20. Nope, sorry, x stays the same. We want y plus 20. Uh, that's 10, not 20. y plus 20, and we want y plus 35, I believe. And that should be perfect. Let's change this HP to hunger. And then we've got C black. Of course, let's change this to maybe a yellow because we want them all to be different colors. We want it to be very easy to tell the difference between all of them. Um, so HP hunger, okay, let's test this out, make sure our coordinates are correct here. The thing about these draw events is it's all about playing around, seeing, seeing what works best. Um, perfect, look at that. So now we've got our yellow and we've got our green here, so hunger and health. So let's do it one more time, but with thirst. Control C, Control V, which is just copying and pasting and I'm gonna change this to 40, and I'm gonna change this to 75. So every time you edit this Y variable, you have to edit this Y variable as well. Um, just so the whole health bar is completely lowered. If you were to edit just this one, it would make a very um, thick uh, Y. Um, a, a very thick or a thinner, um, depending on how you do it, uh, health bar. So if we wanna keep it the same size, whatever you add to that Y, you gotta to add to the other Y. So let's hit, actually we did not change any of the colors in the draw event. Uh, we gotta change hunger to thirst. I don't know what I was thinking there. And we gotta change yellow to, uh, let's change it to blue because you know, thirst blue, I think, <laughs> I think it kind of works. Um, and let's hit play here. And that is extremely thick. What did we do there? Did I, 150, oh. <laughs> Uh, plus 75, plus 55, because 35 plus 20. I, I was thinking 35 plus 40. Um, awesome. You guys having fun yet? Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Look at this. So we've got our health, our hunger, and our thirst. Perfect. Now, of course, they, they don't go down. Um, so let's, let's make hunger go down over time, and let's make thirst go down over time. So inside OBJ stats, let's add, let's go into the create event, sorry. And down here, we're going to set... Um, decrease uh, variables, let's see, yeah, decrease variables. And we're gonna set two alarms. We're gonna set alarm zero is equal to, let's say 15, and alarm one is equal to 35. Yeah, let's try that out. So we have two alarms here. If you don't know what alarms do, basically alarms, it's kind of like putting a timer. It's not gonna run any code until this number goes down to one. 
So it's going to go 15, 14, blah, blah, blah. It's going to go down really fast. And then when it hits one, um, it actually goes up from zero. So it goes going one, two, three, four, five, and then it's going to hit 15 and then boom, it's going to run whatever code you have. So of course your hunger and your thirst goes down over time. So we don't want to go into the step event and have it subtract really, really rapidly. Um, instead, we want to have it go down at certain, uh, certain intervals. So let's add an event. We're going to add the alarm zero event. And this is where we put all the code that's going to be run once our alarm hits 15. So I'm just going to say thirst minus equals two. So of course your thirst is going to go down a lot quicker than your hunger will. Um, if you have a game where you're running around, you could say um, if running is equal to true, uh, thirst minus equals seven. Because of course, if you're running, your thirst is gonna go down a lot quicker. So um, the same with your hunger. Uh, so we're going to do, and also we have to reset the alarm. That's the thing with alarms. So once you set the alarm and it go, goes up to 15 and it runs this code, that's all it's going to do. The alarm doesn't reset itself. So by adding in this code here, that just resets the alarm back to zero, and then it's going to run it again. So it's going to constantly, every 15 steps, it's going to constantly uh, subtract from thirst. Next, uh, we're going to actually, let's, I just had a thought here. Uh, when they get in the game, their thirst isn't going to start subtracting straight away. Neither is their hunger. It's going to take a bit of time. So let's actually set this to 150. Now let's set this to 200. So that way, there's a bit of time. Actually, let's even set it more. Let's set that to 250 and 300. So there's there's going to be a bit of a, a gap. When you first jump in the game, it's going to take uh, you know a, a little bit, and then you're going to start losing hunger and thirst bit more, I don't know, makes it a bit easier on the player. Didn't even think about that, but we caught it uh, at a good time. So alarm zero, this still stays 15, because after you start losing thirst, now we want to start losing it at a constant rate. Um, now we're gonna add alarm one, we're gonna drag in some more code, and we're just gonna say, what do you know, hunger minus equals two. And we're going to set alarm one is equal to, what was it, 35? Um, sure, let's go with 35. I'm not exactly positive though. So. Uh, we've got alarm zero which subtracts from health and then resets itself and alarm one which subtracts from hunger and then restarts itself So that is perfect. So let's uh, let's hit okay. and Let's test the game here and It's gonna wait we're gonna have to wait a little while so I'm just gonna Hold on here and you guys enjoying the tutorial You're learning a lot. Okay, there we go So our thirst is going down quite rapidly that's very, very fast. So we, we're going to want to increase our, yeah, we're definitely going to want to increase our alarms because that's, that's a little way, 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 way too fast. Um, of course, I forgot to mention this. If you guys don't want it to change color, you can change this min color. Just change it to the same color you have for your max color, and then it's never going to change. Um, so let's set alarm one. Let's set this to uh, 75. Not 75. Uh, f uh, 45. Now let's set this to 75. Um, that should be a lot better. Let's hit OK and OK or play. Sorry. And we can subtract from health. All right. And in a little bit here, I'm going to. I forgot to mention this. I'm going to show you guys how to set up the HP um, to subtract when you are. Uh, when you have it attached to a player. Um, it's quite simple actually. Um, so there we go. So now we're actually subtracting at a decent speed. Now of course you can change that according to what you want for your game, but that's the base of that. Um, now if you do have a player that already has a health variable and stuff, if you uh, pretend this is the, actually let's do this. So we've got our OBJ player here. And in the create event you have, you have your own HP variable. We, to make it so that our OBJ stats can use it for the health bars. All you have to do is add global dot to the front. So it's going to set, so it's going to make HP a global variable, which means all objects can use it. So now, if you go into the OBJ stats and you go into your draw event, you can change this. If you change this to global dot HP, it is going to use the HP variable from your player, um, from your player object, which is really awesome. Uh, saves you a bit of effort. Um, of course, that being said, 
Um, not necessary. Like you don't have to go that way. It's there's no problem with having the HP variable in here. You will um, probably have to end up making this a global anyways, um, so that when this HP is equal to zero, your player does die, um, or something happens to your player. Same with your hunger or your thirst. Um, if you want these to be used in any other objects, you will have to add global onto the front, uh, which means you will have to add global onto the front of every other line of code. Um, most things here you can really do in game. Like if you, you know, if HP is equal to zero, restart the room, you can have that inside a step event inside the OBJ stats. It doesn't necessarily have to be inside the player object. Now there's one more thing I was going to do. Um, I'm just going to, in the press space, let's take out this code. And I'm just going to say if thirst is not equal to max thirst, then thirst uh, plus equals two. So um, yes, actually let's do plus equals one. Uh, you may have to change this depending on, no, we'll do two, two, yeah, two. Um, so this is just to quickly to show you. So if you have like a, a drink in your game, maybe you're making Daisy and you have a Coca-Cola bottle. Um, when the player picks up and uses the Coca-Cola bottle, you want to add to thirst, of course. But you only want to add to thirst if thirst is not not 100, if it's not equal to max thirst. So now every time we hit space, it's going to add 2 to thirst until it reaches 100. So let's hit play and let's test this out. Um, this is just to show you guys a bit about how to apply it to your own game. Um, so now we're going to wait, of course. Got a new microphone, you guys. Uh, you enjoying it? Audio Technica AT2020. A bit better than what I was using before. Okay, so now we're subtracting. And now what we can do is if we hit space, it'll go back up and it won't go past 100. 100 is the highest it will go to, which is perfect. Um, and that's, that's just great. So now it means you're not going to have a thirst bar that goes way over here because who really wants that in their game? Um, anyways, this tutorial is a lot longer than I thought it would be. Um, I hope I showed you guys uh, a few different elements of the uh, health bar system and the um, hunger bar system and I hope I showed you guys a few ways to implement it into your game. If you have any questions, please um, you can either leave a comment, uh, leave a message on my website or send me an email to parker at ariangames.com and I will reply as soon as I can. Um, I try and you know I, I'm always I always have it up and it's always updating. So it's very I, I get the messages very quickly so I will respond as soon as possible and I want to thank you guys all so much for watching I hope you learned something about Game Maker and I will talk to you all later